Too many of us, we're just living for the moment. We're doing what we do. We're taking care of business, and it's hard, man. The pace of life is faster than it's ever been. The duties and responsibilities that we have, they seem greater. The dangers seem greater. There's so much going on. But listen, what we've got to learn to do is understand that our calling is to live for eternity. Just listen to this. You don't have to turn to it. In chapter 4, here's the way Paul explains it as he continues to write this letter. We are pressured in every way, but not crushed. Why? Because we rest in the God of all comforts. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. And because of that, he goes on in verse 14 to say this, we know the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead. We never get away from that truth. And he will raise us also with Jesus and present us with you. Indeed, everything is for your benefit so that grace extended through more and more people. In other words, more and more people getting saved. Our examples of God's grace, our examples of the gospel, our showing and introducing people to the God of all comforts through our lives, that's more and more people. It may give cause for thanksgiving to increase to God's glory. Therefore, we do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day by the God of salvation, the God of mercies, the God of abundance, the God of hope, and the God who raises from the dead. For our momentary light affliction is producing for us, listen to what he says, an absolute incomparable eternal weight of glory. He's living for eternity. So we do not focus on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. That's why Jesus said, lay it for yourself, treasures in heaven, moth and rust and decay can't take away.